the biggest whistleblower out there, bar none, is Shebel Edmonds. She's the editor of Boiling Frogs Post and co-founder director of National Security Whistleblowers Coalition. She's a recipient of the 2006 Penn Newman's Own First Amendment Award. Ms. Edmonds uh, worked as a luggage specialist uh, for the um, a language specialist uh, for the uh, FBI, I was thinking about the TSA, where she uh, reported serious acts of security breaches and cover-ups. She was looking at NSA intercepts and listening to it. And for that, she was retaliated against and unfairly fired. Now, I want her to recap her story. She told Congress in closed session, closed hearings. Sh then she was told, shut up. There's other whistleblowers, but they didn't have the courage that she's had to go public uh, she later broke the gag order and went through what she heard, the government drug dealing, Al-Qaeda being commanded, arms dealing. Now they admit they grow the opium in Afghanistan. So I wanted to just preface all of this up front that she's undoubtedly the biggest and most senior whistleblower to actually put the finger from the inside, not just the image we're seeing from the outside, clearly using the attacks to take our liberties, launch wars, lie about WMDs, create a clash of civilizations as PNAC called for. And her website uh, is classifiedwoman.com. She has a new book out in the startling new memoir, Seabell Edmonds, the most classified woman in U.S. history, takes on a surreal journey that begins with a secret of FBI uh, down the dark halls of feckless Congress to a stonewalling judiciary and finally to the National Security Whistleblowers Movement she spearheaded. We'll stop right there and bring her up with us for the balance of the hour, but it's great to have her here with us. Correct any points that I may have gotten wrong, recap your story, what you heard, and what your book covers. Thank you very much, Alex, uh, and thank you for this great intro. Uh, one of the things is when you just mentioned that I'm the most classified woman in the history of the United States, this is what the United States legal communities, including the ACLU, have commented. You know, they slapped me with the state secret privilege, not once, twice. And with this book, Classified Woman, we have been fighting the FBI and the Justice Department for over a year to get this book out to publish it. And uh, you have to submit it to the FBI because they own it. When you, when you work for agencies like this and you obtain clearance, they make you sign these uh, forms and papers, and you give up every single right you have as a citizen. Most importantly, you give up your First Amendment rights. I didn't realize it when I took the job with the FBI three days after 9-11. I was naive. I was one of the majority in the United States who believed FBI was a you know, good law enforcement agency. I, I had a master's degree in public policy, and my head was filled up with all these theoretical and, and, and you know, fantastical lies that we still have separation of powers and system of checks and balances. So I went ahead and I signed those papers. Well, they used those papers saying, you have no right to publish a single word in this book. Ordinarily, they take it. You know, all these people who have had clearance with FBI, they have to submit it, okay? I mean, this is a, this itself is police state because this is, this is absolutely a uh, contradiction to our First Amendment. And the FBI has to go through it and decide what they need to redact, and they have 30 business days to do that. They sat on it for one year. They sent letters to my attorney. They said they are not releasing a single word, not a single word. Yeah, and let's be clear. Let's tell people what you were doing. You were for the FBI looking at NSA intercepts. So you, three days after 9-11, you get hired. They're hiring a big force to go in there and listen to the Arabic and things. You're hearing al-Qaeda. I mean, tell people in a nutshell the intercepts, what you heard. Well, first of all, there were several areas where I was working for the FBI, counterintelligence and also counterterrorism. Now, some of these uh, files dated back to mid-1990s, Alex, 1996, okay? And it covered the uh, period 96 to 2001. And we, as a nation, and this is not the FBI, okay? This is the CIA and the State Department, our military-industrial complex. We were busy working in Central Asia and in Caucasus. These are the Turkic uh, republics, you know, the ex-Soviet Union states. And I do speak those languages. I speak Turkish, I speak Azerbaijani, so I had to re-review because they had been translated, summary translation before. And basically, it showed that our government, okay, has been working with, they didn't even call them 
Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda didn't get to be called Al Qaeda until 9/11 in the FBI. They still refer to them, our government, as Mujahideen, our allies, Mujahideen. So they were creating cells in Central Asia and Caucasus, and they had an arm of NATO. And this is through their, uh, you know, Turkey is an uh, ally country, is a NATO member, and creating cells together with these elements from Pakistan and Saudi Arabia, Bin Laden and uh, Ayman Zawahiri, and they were pouring. Hundreds of millions of dollars, creating these terror cells against Russia in Central Asia and Caucasus, in Azerbaijan, in Kyrgyzstan, in Tajikistan, and and they're using the same terror cells against Libya and Syria and against Russia again, while using them against us to take our liberties. Yeah, they've been using and they've been partners with these people. Those people actually work for us. They have been working for us since 1980s. The the big Afghan Soviet. And this is war. after the Russian thing, though. You're seeing stuff 96, and you said up. To, uh, exactly. And you said up to the day of 9/11. Tell us about those. We built 300 madrasas, okay, with our money, our taxpayers' money. Congress would help the federal government, and this is the State Department and Pentagon, to funnel money to these Turkish construction companies. To, uh, these are front companies, as uh, these are the aid, the U.S. aid to to democracy, you know, to bring democracy. To these, to these states, when the money was being used, building madrasas, bringing Zawahiri several times into Azerbaijan. So for the FBI, it was a shock because the, the FBI, they were not like the CIA. I mean, uh, not the heads. The heads of FBI, they are part of the same police state. But these agents for years have been calling for real investigations, but they were being shut down by the State Department and the CIA. This was our so-called diplomatic foreign relations. This was what we were doing. We were also doing it in certain regions of China. You know, it's referred to as East China. By the way, stay there. You know, whistleblowers are protected under the Constitution when they're exposing criminal activity. Folks, you're hearing, I mean, she's, she's breaking stuff down here. Uh, that that it again absolutely proves it. I mean, she saw the intercepts with Bin Laden right up to 9/11 under CIA command. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at Infowars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure, but if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. She's working for the FBI, and, and, and from what she's saying, there's some good people in the FBI. We know that head of counterterrorism, O'Neill, quit and even told British papers they're working with al-Qaeda. They're going to stage something and use it to launch wars. Yeah, and a lot more. And then, of course, he died on 9-11 in the World Trade Center, if you can believe that. Uh, but going back to Seabell Edmonds in her uh, new book we're going to be talking about, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. We're going to do a commercial-free, long interview with her on Friday on InfoWars Nightly News as well, and hopefully have her on video Skype. Uh, he's, he's on phone today. So, Seabell, uh, continuing, let's get to the nitty-gritty and how you did get the book published. But first, uh, you know, I mean, repeat, because you didn't break the gag order until a few years ago, and, and now you're going even further. And they've been persecuting people that expose them. Uh, obviously, we know there's a whole NSA division that's leaked uh, just to spy on government people that know the truth of 9-11. Uh, but tell folks uh, the relationship with al-Qaeda, drug dealing, weapons, and the CIA, State Department. Break it down for folks. Well, let me give you one very straightforward example. In mid-'90s, okay, we, this is U.S. and NATO. They used the largest private Turkish airline, okay, that went into Caucasus and Central Asia. And these, this is this, this place, Central Asia and Caucasus, has Mujahideen from all over the place. You know, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan. Uh, part of the group was actually Chechens, and they brought these Mujahideen into Turkey. 
they gave them Turkish passports. They trained up militaristically for three to six months with Turkish passports. Then these individuals, the same Mujahideen, these are the people under Zawahiri, under Bin Laden, they were with NATO planes. Again, Turkey is a NATO country. Were then transferred into Bosnia, you know, back into Albania, Kosovo region. We were working the same thing. We were taking them actually into Romania. And they all held Turkish passports, okay? Well, these people were the people, as I said, we have been partnered with. And then 9-11 happens, and they come out and they say there is, you know, this Al-Qaeda, this, this, this brand that sounds pretty ferocious, Al-Qaeda. And then there is this Bin Laden, and these people have been, you know, they hate us and the way we live. Well, I, I always tell people, Alex, terrorists, no matter from where, they cannot take away our freedom. They can't make it dent into our Constitution. Not a dent. The only power capable of taking away our liberties and destroying our Constitution is the government, our own government. You can have a terrorist, either domestically or internationally, blow up a bus, but can they blow up a Constitution? Well, that's what our government has been doing since 2001, 9-11. They have been, basically, they have made Constitution irrelevant because Constitution today is some kind of a historic document. It because we're apply. just one more Where's country. Is gone? We're just one more country that they're looting, just like Afghanistan for the opium. And of course, there's all these factions of different groups that want the opium. Of course, Al Qaeda, Mujahideen was the faction that worked with the West. This was all a big joke for them to help knock out the other Taliban and people who had been shutting down opium production. Absolutely. And you have you ever heard anyone in the mainstream media or even the quasi alternative media talking about this? The heroin and opium production is a no no. It's a no no. They won't touch that topic. Look at Afghan GDP. They don't even have a GDP, right? Well, the whole economy is based on this. And we are looking at hundreds of billions of dollars. Where is it going? They point out once in a while Time Magazine and those crap shooters. They say, look at those guys with shawar, those bearded guys. They are the warlords who have all the opium. <laughs> those guys don't have hundreds of billions of dollars. Who are the ones who are getting these hundreds of billions of dollars? Who are the real players? I mean, you look at NATO and say, that's one arm of NATO nobody dares to expose. And it's been the case for so long. But you find one person, one reporter from the mainstream or the quasi, the Soros-funded quasi-alternative, and show one that who dares touching this particular No, it's topic. all a total hoax. We're about to go to break, long segment coming up. But get back into more of these communiques. What did you think as you're in there as an FBI translator reading this, um, uh, you were somebody, you know, with all these degrees and things that believe the official narrative of how the world works. What was going through your mind? I, I was so naive. I thought if I were to go and tell the people in Congress, in the Senate Intelligence Committee, if I were to go to court, I was going to expose this and we were going to have a bunch of high-level U.S. officials go to jail. I was that naive. I mean, I was almost stupid. And so I did go through these so-called channels. And with every channel, they shut me up further. They invoke, they even invoke gag orders illegally, unconstitutionally on Congress via retroactive classification. And it took me four or five years to realize there is no system. The system has been broken. There is only one branch of government, and that is the police, the state government. One, there is no separation of powers. They have the federal... Stay there, stay there. We're going to be right back. We're